Hello and welcome to a new video about the physical principles of electricity. Today we are going to talk about conductivity of gases. Last time we talked about conductivity of liquids, now gases. I can make it short. Gases are isolators. Period. However, really it's not that simple. Today we want to have a look into what needs to happen that even an isolator like a gas might turn into something conductive. So like all things, gases are built out of atoms. So we have an atom, we have some very core, protons, neutrons, we know, nucleus, and around this core we do have our hull with the electrons. This is our, our gas. And inside a gas, those things are really mobile. Hmm? Really, we can move. And now we do the following. Now we add an electrical field. Electrical field. So we have a force at the nucleus in one direction and, and to the electrons in the hull in the other direction. Good. So that's one thing. Yeah? And we can imagine that, that we can turn this electrical field higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and the force is getting more and more and more. There is no limit. At some point in time, we do have enough force to rip out one electron. So we have here one electron. And because of the force to this electron, this whoop will be ripped out of it. Yeah? Here's the electron. Ripped out because of this force, of this immense force of our electrical field. Because our electrical field exceeded a certain level, yeah? so we can rip out one electron, even if it's quite stable atom. This is called ionization. Okay? Ionization. Because actually what is left is one atom which has now positive charge because it's missing one electron and we have one free electron. And if the force is really that big, those two will separate it and will stay separated because one is the moving in this direction, the other one is moving in this direction and we are done. Okay, we are done, ionization ready. If it's just because of the field, it's called, so if because of field, it's called field ionization. Field ionization. Okay? Because of the strength of the field, we ionize this. Yeah? And then we have to imagine there's one electron, there are other atoms and so on, and this electron is flying around and suddenly hitting another electron. Okay? Hitting another atom. Yeah? And a combination of this strong field and the additional kick of this free electron will also kick out a second electron uh, of another, it's another not the neighbor, but maybe a second, a second atom. Yeah? If this is kicked out by one electron, yeah, this is called impact ionization. Yeah? Because of Flying, hitting, hitting particle, impact, ionization. This impact ionization, field ionization. Both cases we do have then pre charged particles, huh? and we are those are moving. Moving charged particles, current. Suddenly, this thing is 
is uh, conductive because we ionized it. This is what is what is happening. I'm sure you have already observed such process. Let's imagine. Let's imagine a landscape. So we have we do have somewhere a landscape. Tree, it's a house. There's another house, a bigger house, somehow, I don't know, like that. Then another tree, All right? Landscape, and we do have clouds. And it might be that inside clouds there is a charge building up. We imagine that there are small water drops, and these water drops are charged by ionosphere and so on, by the natural field of the Earth. And then, if they're touching the self, it might come to separation of, of, of uh, charged elements. And suddenly, we have a charged area inside the cloud usually negative. Must not be, but often it is. So we have here a negative charged area. And from those negative charged area, they feel, we feel it on the ground. We feel it on the ground. Okay. So the, the electrons on the ground try to get away from this huge amount of electrons too much electrons over there, and will the, the things will remain here positive. Okay, so we have here positive influenced charges. So we have here an electric field building up between between the ground and and sky, the the cloud. I think you know where it's going to. Yeah? I'm, I'm talking about a flash. You have already observed a flash. And then something is happening. Then there is a, a so-called stepped leader is built. So here we might exceed this field strength. Yeah? And locally in this direction, for instance. Yeah? Then we will have an ionized channel here. Yeah? And we will then these particles will flow in and we will charge up this channel. Yeah? And this does not help the matter because the closer we get, yeah, the, the stronger the field is. So every time we will build a new a new element of our so-called stepped leader, step because it's going in steps. Because we need to, to get in those charges. Yeah? And then, if we are close enough, we are close enough. There's the so called return stroke here. Took return stroke. Now, we do have a conductive channel between a positive and a negatively charged area. They will immediately combine. They will immediately combine. Now, we start to whoop. Up to now, we have not seen anything. We have maybe felt it because of this high, high electric field. We feel it on the hairs and so on. If you ever feel something in your hairs in a thunderstorm, please, that's, that's probably your last, change, your last change to to seek some shelter. Because now, what is happening now is whoop, sick. Now we have the flash. All right? Now there is really, really charges flowing. Now there's really quite a high current. And we will decharge this. Sometimes it's not working at once. Sometimes we just suck out the charges in a, a certain area. And the charges from around need a little time to get closer. So we see this flash building up, and this ionized channel is not just disappearing. It's not just disappearing, it is it stays there. And if in a reasonable amount of time enough charges come back, 
it we see the same flash a second time. This is why some flashes look like flashy. Yeah? Some, some flashes make and some flashes make so sparkles or yeah, light up several times. Yeah? Those several times are called stroke. And this is just because this ionized channel is not completely gone yeah, from here into now. And if enough charges are, are coming back, we see, we see it several times. This is how a flash is built up. This is how we can get air or any gas to conduct if ionize it. And yeah, we also use this neon tubes, for instance. Yeah, neon tubes, we have there a plasma and ionized plasma, it's called then. And if there is current running, it's starting to glow. It has nothing to do with luminescence, uh, fluorescent tube. Uh, it's neon tubes, really. There is a difference. We'll probably talk about it later. Uh, this is how conductivity of gases work. And sometimes, or very often, you have a special smell. If there are flashes and so on, you have a special smell. And I'm not talking about this, this moisture smell, this, this wet smell of wet earth, uh, which is also there if it's just raining. I'm talking about a very specific smell. It's a smell of, of uh, an element. And I want to briefly show you. So usually we also have... Uh, we also have oxygen in the air. I'm sure you know we have oxygen. Yeah, we breathe the air because of this oxygen. And this oxygen consists usually in the form of O2. Yeah? So we have O2. This is the usual form of oxygen. So we have two oxygens with two nucleus, with two oxygen atoms. And those two oxygen atoms usually do have here two connections to each other, and that's it, and it's quite stable. Okay. However, here, if we can rip out one electron, we also might end up in an O plus ion. Okay. So we have somewhere an ion, book, it's the same core, but one electron less. So we have an O plus ion. And if those two are combined, then it might happen that we have O3 building up. And O3 is looking like that. We have three oxygens yeah, with their respective electron halves, and they are grabbing each other's hands yeah, like that. Yeah, so they dance in the three somehow. Huh? And this stuff here, this O3, if it looked at this, is called ozone. Probably heard it, ozone layer. Ozone layer is disappearing somewhere. Yeah. Big problem. Meanwhile, I think we stabilized it, but we'll see. Ozone. So ozone is building up. In thunderstorms or everywhere we have ionized effect of ionization. This is this is ozone, and you smell it. This is a typical sharp ozone smell. If you ever if you ever have uh, participated in a show in a high voltage show where you see the flashes and so on, you smell it immediately. That's ozone you smell. So conductivity of gases. You see, at some point in time, we can really get everything conducted just need to apply enough force. And now we're talking we have talked about moving moving charges. Next time we try to figure out how fast those charges are moving. How how fast is let's take a usual usual conductive material, I don't know, something like that. Uh, here I think that's a 1, 1.5 square millimeter, uh, or if it's even a 2 square millimeter, I don't know. We will calculate 1.5 square millimeter, 
copper wire, yeah, typical strength of, of, of volt, of, of current. And we'll see how fast are those electrons moving through this solid material. Because we know when you turn on the light, it is, yeah, so it must, they must be fast, right? We'll see next time. Next time, calculate the speed of electrons. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.